Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ilana Stein, Israeli government spokesperson. Today is Wednesday, the 3rd of April, 2024, day 180 of the October 7th war. 180 days on, our determination to achieve our war aim remain the same. Bring home the hostages, destroy Hamas, ensure that Gaza never becomes a threat to us again. I want to update you on four items. Let's begin with the first one. I want to start today with an update on the unintentional harm to the World Central Kitchen workers on Monday night. As you know, there have been expressions of regret and apologies from the President of the State of Israel, from the Prime Minister and Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, the IDF spokesman. In the early hours of this morning, the IDF Chief of the General Staff, Herzi Halevi, also made a statement expressing regret. I would point you to the comprehensive statement made, so I will not repeat word for word what he said, but I want to share with you some of the key points he made. Firstly, it was a mistake that followed a misidentification at night during a war in very complex war conditions. The World Central Kitchen is an organization whose people do good work in difficult conditions. That the IDF greatly appreciates their important work, it goes without saying that it shouldn't have happened. This incident was a grave mistake. Israel is at war with Hamas, not with the people of Gaza. IDF is taking immediate actions to ensure that more is done to protect humanitarian aid workers. We are sorry for the unintentional harm to the members of WCK. We share in the grief of their families. IDF has created a new humanitarian command center to improve the way we coordinate aid distribution in Gaza. We see great importance in continued delivery of humanitarian aid and we will keep working to facilitate this vital effort. Next is the latest update on the explosion that occurred last week on March 30th in Ramish, southern Lebanon, resulting in injuries to several UNIFIL representatives. The IDF has today confirmed that the explosion was caused after a UNIFIL patrol drove over a charge that had been previously placed by Hezbollah in the area. Next is an update from our war against Hamas in Gaza. In Khan Yunis, IDF troops found many weapons. We have hit terror infrastructures and weapons storage facilities, weapon parts, explosive devices, and grenades. In Al Amal, IDF troops killed and apprehended a number of terrorists in close quarters combat. Now an update on the hostages. An update on 133, 34 hostages. We have already confirmed that 36 have been killed by Hamas. We continue to do everything to release the 134 hostages that are still cruelly held by the Hamas terror army. Our hostages are an open wound in the Israeli society. Hamas continues to make unfounded demands. Alongside the military pressure negotiations continue, Israel is in constant contact with the mediating countries in order to bring forth a framework that will enable the release of all the hostages. That ends today's briefing. I will now take your questions and please put them in the chat with your news outlet. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. First question from Jim Williams at Zenga International News Service, Washington, D.C. He asks, given the vital role the WCK has played in feeding both Israelis and those in Gaza, uh, after the tragic mistake killing seven of the WCK team, has the Prime Minister or anyone from the government reached out to Mr. Andres to say what a tragic mistake uh, has been made and to assure him that WCK is needed and every effort will be made to keep his workers safe. Yes, they have been contacts with him directly and personally to, first of all, say that we regret this awful tragedy and second of all to say that we are looking into everything possible to make sure that this won't happen again. So yes. Next question from Joel Pollock of uh, Breitbart News. Even before the attack, Chef uh, Jose Andres was accusing Israel of targeting humanitarian workers, journalists, and even 
killing children. Today, he's written an op-ed in the Israeli media saying that Israel is not doing its best. Is he right? And what could Israel be doing, be doing differently? So, as I said before, this is a very complex war situation. Every war is very difficult, it's very messy, it's very dangerous, and it has ca casualties that we would all rather not have on the Israeli side and on the Palestinian side. So if, having said that, Israel has been checking itself every day. We have been reviewing our actions in different manners, uh, also in the field, but also regarding what we can do to distribute aid. As I said before, we even are decided now to have a new uh, center that will uh, make sure that we coordinate all the aid. Um, I think whenever you're asked, any person knows that we can always be better. We always strive to be better. That's what we're doing here in Israel, all the Israelis, and definitely uh, the IDF as well. Um, so we'll do everything in our power to make sure that the aid is distributed in the future. What would help us if Hamas would not take over, you know, the aid, and then actually the people would get the food trucks. But that is something that has not to do with the WCK. They tried to distribute the aid, and we thank them for doing that. Question from Joel Pollock of Breitbart News. You've said that Israel is creating a new center to coordinate between aid groups and the military. American officials have said that this should have happened already. What's the reason for the WCK tragedy? And secondly, is there any known reason why the WCK uh, convoy was traveling at midnight? These questions you can try to ask a COGAT. I don't have the answer about why they traveled at night. Maybe they thought it was safer, but I don't know. What I can say is that we, we, are, we will have the center now. And it's not like we didn't coordinate before. We don't need a center to start coordinating. These things were coordinated. But now the decision has been made to make a center where we coordinate things. And hopefully it will help us to improve in this aspect as well. Thank you. Question from uh, Frederick Ager from Interplanetary Te Television. The UN Human Rights Council would consider this Friday a draft resolution co-sponsored by 54 countries, including Bolivia, Cuba, and the Palestinian mission to the UN in Geneva, calling for an arms embargo on Israel, citing the plausible risk of genocide in Gaza. Is Israel sending a legal team similar to the one that took the stand before the ICJ to counter the claims? of the draft resolution and present its own draft resolution about Hamas's war crimes and crimes against humanity? Um, I'll have to get back to you on that. But what I can tell you is if all this energy would have been put forward to make sure that Hamas brings back the hostages, everything would have looked different because they have innocent people there, children, elderly, women, people who are injured, people who don't have their medicine, and people of Gaza could have been freed from Hamas if Hamas would have brought us back our hostages, if they would have just let somebody else take control of the power in, of, and have a different regime in Gaza. We all could have had much better lives. And if we could all turn the clock back to October 6th, I'm sure that most people in Gaza would be happy with that. And definitely all Israelis would be happy with that. So I think if international effort would be more into bringing back our hostages, then we can all have a faster resolution to this awful war that we have now. Thank you. Last question from Jean-Philippe Rubin uh, from BIM uh, Media Group. Um, Israel will short, shortly be celebrating the holiday of Passover, freedom uh, for, all, for all mankind from slavery. What could be the message of Israel to the nations of the world regarding freedom from slavery? It's very sad that we have now people who are enslaved and we've heard some evidence um, of women, for example, who have been used as domestic slaves in Gaza and families in Gaza that have taken them captive, people who are terrorists naturally. Um, I, so I think this will be a very, unfortunately, very sad holiday in Israel unless all the hostages are back home before that, to which we all pray for that. And I think that freedom is one of the things that in the free world is, a, is one of the highest values that we have. And to know that we 
to not have freedom at the moment. And it's not only the hostages, it's also the people in the northern part of Israel who are not in their homes. They do not have the freedom to pursue their careers because they're not in their homes, they're not in their communities, they don't have the freedom to live with their families, their normal day-to-day -day life. We have many communities in the north that we had to, we had to take, the, take them the, to the south, the, to actually to the center of Israel, and many communities from south, southern part of Israel who are also not safe there. So we have a lot of people in Israel who are not free to live their day-to-day -day life because of Hezbollah in the north and Hamas in, in the south, and naturally because of Iran, which is the puppeteer who is running this whole show and is using Hezbollah and Hamas for inciting the whole region. Hopefully, I can just pray that by uh, Passover, Israeli Pesach, that we will have all the hostages at home and we can really celebrate the holiday of freedom. Thank you, Ilana. That was the last question. Thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow again.